and Francesca from the Havering Daily. Um, we are outside of the Town Hall in Romford today for the Havering Cyclist and Havering Extinction Rebellion protest. As you can see, we are surrounded by activists and cyclists, uh, really letting the leader of the council know and enough is enough. We want more cycle lanes, we want more cycling infrastructure, we want more done to support cyclists and to support climate change uh, in the borough. So oh, Alice, you're here today for a particular reason, that's to tell the council leader that enough is enough and you want more cycle lanes, is this correct? Yes, we've given the council over a year to work on having something put in place to have better cycling lanes. I was just talking to my friend today, the park at Harold Wood where there's a nice cycle path where you can cycle through, um, I, I always forget the name of the parks, um, but you can cycle through from the park straight into Harold Wood. It's lovely. There's a little bridge that goes over the brook. The bridge is broken. It, it's closed, so you can't go over the ridge. So it means you have to go on Squirrels Heath Road. And that doesn't feel safe when you're a 13-year-old. So why is it important that we have more cycle lanes? We've got already congestion issues. Do you think having cycle lanes will help? Well, if we have more people cycling, then less people would be in their cars. So that's going to reduce the amount of congestions by cars. It's going to reduce the amount of pollution in the air. So this is why having more cycle lanes would be so much better. Right, okay. There are people that are going to argue that they have to use their cars. You know, there's people that use vans to go to work every day, you know, and their the vans are a necessity. They can't use a cycle lane. So why are we going to spend hundreds of thousands, because that's what in, in theory will probably cost, for a cycle lane when they could be better spent for other things? Well, we're not stopping people from getting to work. We're just trying to get children to get to school safely. We're trying to get parents to get to their work safely. And we want them to use active, sustainable travel. We've already been proven with COVID-19 that you don't want to be having any particular damage already to your lungs. It's a it's an a respiratory disease, isn't it? Okay, we are joined by a very special young man today. Tell us your name. Um, I'm called Noah. And how old are you, Noah? I'm 11 and a half years old. And tell us why is it important to cycle? Um, it's important to cycle not only for your health but for your mental health as well and for the planet because uh, the planet right now is suffering a climate emergency and if we don't act now about it then there's not much we can do after because we're driving in cars all the time and we're never bothering to walk or cycle or you know actually be healthy and cars are releasing a lot of uh, bad fumes that are harming our environment and that's why we should cycle and walk more. And what's your message to the council leader today? My message to the council leader is you need to act and not talk because they've done that for, I think it might be two years in a row now. They've just been saying that they're going to do something about it and it's the same, they do this with everything and they just don't do anything about it. So my message to the councillor would be act now and just do it, yeah. So that's Noah telling us to act now before it's too late. Thank you, Noah, for joining us today. So I'm joined by Oscar today, who is the HRA, Havering Residents Association representative, who is a cyclist. Oscar, why are you here today? So I came along today to support the protest. Uh, I'm a cyclist, so I do uh, understand what some of the issues are, but I, it was an opportunity to get to talk to some of, some of the cyclists. I think I managed to speak with about half of them and try and find out what their particular issues are with, with cycling in Havering. I think sadly it's a very generic issue there is a, a very great lack of infrastructure and that's just basic stuff really so it's things like uh, road marking signage uh, proper routes for cyclists share, shared routes um, and I think it points to a lack of strategic thinking at the council and uh, if we can HRA will look to change that there needs to be a clear plan for cycling I think if you trawl through the, the, the council's documents it's quite hard to see where cycling actually features in, in any great way. Um, there is a degree of reliance on funding from the Mayor, Mayor for London uh, for this sort of work but I think the council itself needs to look at its own funds to see what it can do in the meantime. To go alongside the aspect of cycling there's also clean air. Air pollution is a huge aspect for us not just here in Havering 
but right across the borough, isn't it? Or right, right across London and, and the country, really, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So air, air pollution is an issue. Uh, hopefully with the advent of electric vehicles, that will change to some extent. But encouraging people to walk, to cycle, to take alternative forms of transport uh, is going to have a big impact too, but only if the infrastructure is there to support it. And I think we ac actively need to encourage that. Uh, it's been interesting through COVID, seeing what's happened through lockdown, more people working from home. There has been a take up of cycling. Uh, there was some uh, information from Transport for London that suggested that in outer London boroughs, the increase in cycling rate was about 22%, which is huge when you think about it. Uh, that may well taper off a bit as things get back to a, a more normal uh, way of working. But, you know, we need to build on that and, and actively encourage cycling across the borough. And what's your message to the leader of the council today? I think if he makes promises, he needs to stick to them. You know, he has... Uh, stated that he's going to take it on board and uh, push forward with, with measures to improve cycling. Uh, I think today's protest suggests that's not happening yet um, and we need to hold him to account. OK, so we're joined by Terry Hughes from Havering Cyclists. Terry, why are you here today? Uh, we're here today to uh, send a message to the leader of Havering Council to make good on the promises that he made after last year's ride to put some plans in place to get active travel and cycle infrastructure on the agenda for Havering. We, what, we, what people tell us all the time is that they would love to cycle in the borough if only the roads were made safe. Whereas other bother, boroughs such as Kingston and Enfield have received money from the government to put cycling infrastructure into place, none of that has happened here. And we believe it's a lack of uh, ambition and foresight on the part of the council in doing that. So what type of changes, obviously you want to see more cycling infrastructure, would you like more cycle lanes? What actual changes would you like to see made? Yeah, that, that's the kind of thing. Um, some years ago, TfL produced a report called the, the uh, Strategic Cycling Plan and, and that showed some routes into Havering where they foresaw we could produce uh, uh, protected cycle lanes. And they're, they're running along the main roads in, in Havering. And if, if that were done, that would be brilliant. That would be such, a, such an improvement in allowing people to move around the borough by bike instead of being stuck in their cars. What's your main message to Councillor White today? Uh, go, go back to your, your video from last year and please pay attention to it and try and put those things into place, the things he promised. So this morning we're joined by Councillor Keith Darville, who is Head of Labour here in Havering, and he is supporting this. Uh, Councillor Darville, why are you here today? Well, it's very important that the uh, council and the borough take a lead on uh, climate change issues and the environment generally. We recognised this nearly three years ago, moving a motion at the council for all of the environmental policies to be reviewed. Two to three years later, that has not happened. And it's quite clear to me that the current administration and the council do not take climate change seriously. They're not doing that as much to say that what the input that we can have as havering residents in reducing the effect of climate change and improving the environment generally, whether that's on um, uh, noise pollution, whether it's on air pollution, reducing the amount of energy we're uh, consuming, the whole range of this through the public sector and Havering should be driving it uh, and they're not. So given the ability to make the changes what would be the first changes you would make? First may, uh, changes that we would uh, make is um, probably on the uh, waste disposal and recycling uh, that needs to be improved significantly uh, certainly on public buildings more energy efficient better use of the space encouraging uh, residents, particularly where we've got council-owned property, uh, to reduce their uh, heating bills and so on. We can do that by modernisation, uh, double glazing, uh, soft in, uh, loft insulation. There's a whole range of issues which we as a local council can uh, help our residents, helping them, but making a general con uh, contribution uh, throughout the country. And just to ask you nationally as well, because obviously this is something that is affecting, in, well, not just nationally, globally, yeah. really. Um, what would you like to see the current government actually do? 
what the, the government can do is what they say they uh, should be doing, <laughs> which they're not. Um, the, uh, they've set out a longer term policy, it aims to do that, and on, the, on paper it looks I impressive, but it's not. Uh, bearing in mind where we stand as a country with the start of the Industrial Revolution and all of that. Uh, it's just, it's weak. So, um, the, uh, some of the infrastructure issues, they, the government could be doing a lot more on. Uh, they uh, could be, for example, we're already doing quite well on uh, a certain energy, but we, uh, uh, so the uh, non-carbon uh, developed um, resources like coal and so on. So we're getting more uh, energy from wind, for example. They're, they're doing that, but they could do even more. Uh, looking at uh, the energy reduction through wave, waves around the, our coast, there's a number of major infrastructure issues which they could be doing a lot better on. It is the carbon footprint that's the problem, isn't it? And the fact that the fossil fuel, um, still drilling for oil, all these things yeah. that are a huge aspect. Yeah, you know, are. I think this is the global problem, isn't it? That, yes. that, that yeah. we are facing and, uh, and needs something needs to be done, doesn't it? it? It certainly does. I mean, it's not sending the right message just at the start of the uh, international COP25 uh, in, uh, in, in Scotland uh, when we're leading it. And we're at the same time opening new coal mines. It's just not, just not right. Yeah, opening new coal mines, and for the current climate uh, uh, summit that there was, the prime minister went on an aeroplane yeah. from one part of England to another. You know, how is that? Yeah, there's there's, how lo is there's that? lots and lots of examples like that, but uh, you'd almost uh, overlook that if the general policies were much more impressive. I and mean, we see it in our own community. Now with uh, Taunton Road, the area which I represent, twice in five years, major flooding. And I uh, asked a question at the council uh, recently about prioritising flood prevention uh, to um, uh, avoid these problems. Uh, it's clearly not a priority, you can tell from the answer you got from the, to my question. Uh, I asked them if they would prioritise this. So there are dangers if we don't address climate change more and more flooding, uh, more and more people suffering through uh, overheating in, 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 in summer months when you, know, you can see through hospitals among the people that have been affected by that. All of these come back to affect the public purse. And so investment now would reduce that and be more efficient for the future. It's also the air quality, isn't it? Because that is a huge, as you're talking about, we haven't had a particularly hot summer, but on the days we have, you can see that air quality is is rapidly declining, isn't it? Even in boroughs like this, where we're lucky, you know, we have a lot of green. Yeah. It's still air quality. Yeah, particularly around some of the yeah, major traffic areas. Some of the some of the schools are placed in uh, areas where subject uh, to poor air quality, um, and we've seen those those reports. And um, yeah, so a lot more needs to be done on that. Uh, yeah, in, in fact, deaths from uh, air, poor air quality. You, you can see that, there. You, you see the information throughout the borough where that is. So places close to Gallows Corner, for example, the amount of deaths caused by air quality, poor air quality is increasing. That's just an example. Thank you, Keith, for your time.